the screen going off is completely unrelated. <laughs> uh, this is Massive Wiki Wednesday on May 24th, 2023. Um, Bentley was just wondering, um, uh, he's working on an 11T based builder uh, for something that's kind of similar to Massive Wiki Builder and is wondering how how those kind of, th that project might synergize with Massive Wiki Builder or not. And I, so, um, where our priorities are, things like that. I, I, um, um, by, by the way, um, kind of related to 11D, um, I'm pretty sure that, um, that another project I'm working on, uh, I, I'm going to want it to be able to publish essentially do a massive wiki build but instead of publishing it to static files publish it um, into ghost um, via the ghost api um, so and i think the ghost api will support that I, I i read about it earlier and hadn't needed it and now i now i'm like so anyway the use case for that is um, a a project that i'm involved in lm guild actually bill um, where the website's going to be running on Ghost, but it would be nice to have a big resource section that's, or, or an encyclopedia section, knowledge base, um, that is better managed probably in, you know, in massive wiki style, um, Obsidian style. Um, so then massive wiki builder is still the right thing to use for that, except that I don't want it to publish to a separate static site. I want it to publish into the ghost space. And I think ghost has a content API where I can push content into it. Um, so similar to, you know, the, why, why you might use 11 D to, to publish. Um, so, uh, I think, I think it's, um, I think it's great that there could be other static site builders that could interoperate with the same data, basically, as Massive Wiki Builder. Um, so I think the things that are important to kind of try to keep in sync, and we don't have to lock stuff from in sync or anything like that, but to try to keep them in sync um, is uh, the idea of, of building the whole repo, basically. Um, it may be ignoring dot .files and dot .directories, things like that. The idea of, of ignoring dot files and doc directories so that we can stuff, you know, a massive wiki builder or whatever else into that. Dot obsidian is another thing that you know we we kind of just automatically ignore because it's built that way. Um, so so build the whole build a whole markdown repo. Um, use square bracket double square bracket links. Um, uh, use regular files. Um, probably try to stay in sync with the way that file names are handled. Um, so our, our early version of Massive Wiki Builder actually, so I call it mangling when you take a file name and then figure out how you're going to make the URL for it because you want to make sure that the, it's URL safe. Um, Obsidian separately needs to make sure that its file names are um, file system safe. So it disallows colon and, you know, a few other, other things. Um, and they've gone back and forth. Um, mm -hmm. On Max, you can use almost any character in a file name, except I think one. Um, on, on PCs, there's about five characters that you kind of want to stay away from. Um, so then the intersection or the, the union, the union of file name safe and URL safe file names means that you have to change some of the file names a little bit um, or, or you have to change the titles a little bit if you've got a system that's using titles inside the file rather than file names. But there's another weird thing which it, it actually works really well to we've got a convention that the file name is the link target, but we always have a we have a, a fairly strong convention that you always put a H1 as the first line of, of a massive wiki file. And the file name and the, the title are tend to be exactly the same. Sometimes they're a little bit different, maybe with a colon or something is different. Um, the other thing that's different is we read me as we, we just let people name their thing whatever they want. 
that convention happens to work really well with other systems that may or may not use files, for instance. Um, it works really well with HackMD. HackMD has the same convention where it doesn't have a concept of files. It does have a concept of pads or whatever they call them, notes. Um, and if you put an H1 as the top line, it uses that as the name of the note and it, everything just works magically. So if you make a HackMD like I've done today um, with a, the H1 at the top like that, you can find it again in your list of HackMD things. And also you can just save as Markdown, export as Markdown, and it's it'll name it that way. It's just a beautiful kind of like, it just works, right? It even works. Um, there's, um, there's a couple apps on Android and iOS where Android and iOS don't really have a good concept of file systems and you have to fake it. So um, there's a, an app called Git Journal, which I think Bill's decided that he doesn't trust its Git handling, so he doesn't use it. It screwed but... things up. It really <laughs> it took it changed my repository without. Um, that yeah. Term. So yeah, whether or not it's usable is a different question, but it does a cool thing where it fakes a file system, and it's iOS and Android. It fakes a file system, so you know you think you're using files internally. It's using what it, whatever god awful object store that is in Android and iOS, which of course are different. And it too uses that title convention. So that title convention round trips everywhere really nicely so far. Um, so the, the, bear, the bear app does the same thing. Nice, thanks. Um, so that's an example of something that, you know, I, it would be really nice to, to try to keep to that. Um, and it's, and it's, and we found it to be very useful. Um, so, even so then even things like conventions about um, how to make sidebars, um, it would be nice to kind of sync that. It doesn't have to be our way. We could push Massive Wiki towards a better way if there were a better way. Um, we want uh, Massive Wiki Builder wants the concept of different page templates. So right now, <clears throat> all of our pages are the, the page HTML template, but it would be nice to have um, here's a content page, a body page. Here's the home page, which looks different. Um, here's a JavaScript presentation, um, which is probably using a separate template than the page template. Um, right now we've got sidebars on the left and you can only ever have one sidebar. Um, we've, we've come across the, the desire to have two sidebars, um, maybe left, left, but probably left, right, and probably toggleable or something like that. Um, so as we do those things, so the way that we do a sidebar right now, there's, um, we, by convention, we call it sidebar.html. Um, Bill and I, I think naturally capitalized it. It's funny, Matthew didn't capitalize it <laughs> and screwed everything up, but we have a, um, we have a, in, in mwb.yaml, we, we let you tell us what the, the sidebar following is. Um, so it doesn't have to be that kind of convention that we've come up with. It could be something else, but you know, um, things like YAML front matter, YAML front matter is another pattern that works in lots of different tools and seems super valuable. Um, and that's something that a, a builder might not even support, but you know, if you, as we started talking, if you needed to have data that was kind of next to the page, the, it seems like a good convention to use YAML front matter and then the Obsidian convention is really interesting too, to use um, the uh, fence code blocks as chunks of things that you render through a plugin. Um, and obviously you want the fence code block to not look stupid if you're not rendering it as a plugin. Um, so a, a good example of a plugin is the data view plugin for Obsidian, which um, lets you do SQL-ish, it's not SQL at all, but SQL-ish queries um, into your pages. Um, you know, give me all the pages that have this tag or give me, you know, uh, give me the, the time and date last modified for all the pages or whatever. And then you can format that as a table um, with the data view plugin. If, if you don't have the data view plugin or if you publish it to Massive Wiki Builder, you'll end up seeing the query um, in the fence code block. And it, it doesn't look good, but it doesn't look bad either. So um, 
Hey, I use the fence club block for putting in poetry because hey, just yeah. leave this alone and don't screw There's, it up. <laughs> the other the other thing is actually fence code box. You know, people really use them. You know, with uh, and 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 uh, it has the convention where you can use a file type. Um, so then that's usually used. Uh, so you you put shell or CSV or Python or or I was surprised to find MySQL actually worked um, uh, in Typora, I think. Um, uh, so usually use that for syntax highlighting, um, but you can, over, Obsidian has overloaded that file type, you know, the data type um, thing to, to refer to a plugin, which is it's cool and it works. And, and people, I think Markdown, people who read Markdown and people who are reading things through a Markdown renderer are used to running into code blocks and either it makes sense or it doesn't and they don't freak out because there's this blob in their page so that, that it works um uh conceptually and and priority wise um uh i think that the challenge is i i would like to see massive wiki be more widespread and i don't care too much that it's called massive wiki so the the, the same pattern obsidian has a, a very similar pattern right um uh but there's the the a thing to work on for all of us to work on is barriers to adoption kind of <clears throat> and the ones that we run into in massive wiki is kind of like the it's the flip side so bill Bill said it's kind of a superpower that Massive Wiki just builds all the Markdown files in a repo and doesn't care about, you know, directory conventions or anything like that. Um, that's that's a, a a powerful thing. But then it's got the flip side of like, okay, where do I put my images and where do I, you know, how do I structure this thing and how do I collaborate with people and how do I have discussion and stuff like that. So, Massive Wiki builder and then even you know, even the the manifesto for Massive Wiki doesn't really speak to that. And so we have to have Bill and I and other people we're working with, we try to we've we've continued to try to come up with patterns of use, right? So um, the thinking TFT map is is a place where the three of us are kind of pretty good wiki heads and pretty good knowledge management heads. And so we were able to negotiate between ourselves, you know, here's we're going to keep the directory directory structure fairly flat. We're going to have two levels or something like that. Um, uh, and they're fairly obvious directory levels. And then, you know, here's how we're going to do discussion. Here's how we're going to do internal blogs and external blogs and all that kind of stuff. All of that is is convention that the team is using, not part of the tools, which is good and bad. You know, that it, it would be super nice. <clears throat> Now thinking about it, actually, um, Massive Wiki right now is kind of in the state of, of um, bear with me for a sec. Um, it's kind of in the state of Git branches. You know, it's just pure capability without any, without any opinion about how you actually use it to do something useful, right? So then when whoever it was invented Gitflow and wrote up that great blog post, it's like, oh, you mean I could actually use branches and I could use branches in a way that, that the whole team could understand what branches are where and we could have a workflow that involves branches. We don't really have much of that yet for Massive Wiki where it's like, here's a bunch of capability, but here's how you actually use it. So, so as we have different tools evolving, it would be awesome. I, I love the idea of your kind of feature comparison map. You know, If you wanna do you know, this kind of publishing, um here's probably the tool you want here's the conventions that go with that that tool and make it sing here's how that interacts with the conventions that these other tools have and you know maybe you need to use this subset of what you want or a superset but you know use it gently in these ways or whatever um another another interesting i i was thinking about this just this morning um uh it would be cool to have, it would, it would be cool. I, I don't know why this would be cool, but I think it would be cool to have massive, a, a massive wiki builder that could be a Obsidian plugin. 
um, and an Obsidian plugin. And so Obsidian plugins are in TypeScript. Uh, obviously, you could you could have a, a plugin that ran Massive Wiki Builder, the Python version, but that's kind of dorky. So you know, if if uh, wishes were horses or something, um, and I could have rainbow unicorns, um, a Massive Wiki Builder written in TypeScript that's also an Obsidian plugin would be pretty sweet. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good idea. So you'd be the you can you can pay Obsidian for publish or. <laughs> yeah, you can I, do his massive wiki <laughs> I um, I, I, uh, I, on the one hand, you know, it's like fair game, it's open source, whatever. Um, on the other hand, I, I, I do feel a little bit of sensitivity around their their business model because they've been mm -hmm. just stellar people making it super a wonderful open tool with, and, and making yeah. it available. Oh, yeah. yeah. So I, I wouldn't want to hurt them. I, I don't think they would care. Actually, I think they're they're open to that kind of stuff, I would imagine, from their general demeanor. But at the same time, you know, but anyway, um, an interesting thing about Obsidian plugins is they have them working on mobile too. So they, they have mobile Obsidian and a lot of the plugins work. Mm -hmm. um, even the Git plugin, um, the, Git, the Git plugin guy, sucked in the JavaScript implementation of Git and you know it works. Yeah, so, the Git Obsidian. Yeah, I know. It's yeah. uh, I'm use I use it because it's yeah. yeah. So even you know, even though like uh, Obsidian has become a platform that is you know pretty valuable for you know like that whole plugin and ecosystem is an amazing outcome of their work. Um, and it's and it's cross platform, just kind of mind blowing. So yeah. Can I just add one thing to what you said, Pete? So the other thing for me about what is the the um, to support people using Massive Wiki for me still it's something I brought up I think at the beginning is this issue about how do you the part about Massive Wiki that I think is uh, um, that ends up being the one that's the complicated one is the sharing and the versioning. Yeah. Now we've said if you use a tool like GitHub, you know, a tool like Git and you use a repository, you know, host like GitHub, you can do this. This can work like this. Right? You can do the same thing in Codeberg because we set up an example of that. But uh, um and we went through that experiment where we separated the actual versioning from the sharing and the synchronization using sync thing which was another way to keep all the wikis in sync and keep the the versioning, you know, local. And then you could, so um, that's still sort of what you were talking about the massive wiki workflow. That's still part of like, how do you, do, right? Cause that has been a point where it's harder cause it's like, oh, you can join the Git repository and now everybody can like, you know, we can deal with branches and we can do this other stuff, but that can easily get complicated. Not, but you know, a group of people with some practice can really make it work. But I think in an introduction, it seems like, a, I don't know, it seems like a big step for many people. I'm used to just, you know, creating a bunch of notes and this cool idea about linking them, linking amongst them. Yeah, like, nice. So this I you're you're really onto something built there. And it's it's um um it's it's kind of an open area of I, I don't know research and thinking for me that because um because I, I it's really tantalizing Git is so close to actually working. And yet it's, you know, it's just kind of gnarly. Um, and, and it's got the right model, like uh, um, Massive Wiki is built around text because, partly because you can do things like, um, you know, get easily on lines of text. Um, 
uh, so and and but then like like doing anything without um well if if wishes were horses again it would be like i wish i could wave a magic wand and get um maybe a, a weaker version of the collaboration features of git that were that were a little bit more human understandable or something like that and, and much less sharp edged you know um but any kind of um uh, any kind of algorithmic figuring out how to how to make changes work, you know, it ends up as complex kind of as Git maybe as as a way that. But I guess you know, so a different a different thing is um, using character based uh, like CRDTs or or OT or or something like that, and maybe actually maybe there's a maybe there's a future where you could have line based uh, CDRT, which I think gets you back close to being in Git again, but but the crdt editors that we have i think do better conflict resolution than you know get get kind of gets you to the point where it's like okay um i'll do a bunch of conflict resolution for you automatically and then i'm going to give up at some point because programmers are better at you know fine grain conflict resolution than than the automation is going to be so that works fine that works reasonably fine for programmers it doesn't work so well for most most humans so maybe just fixing, you know, there's something there where fixing the conflict resolution of Git or keeping people from getting into conflicts or giving up sooner or I don't know, giving up later or something. I don't know. So if I can draw us back to the feature <laughs> list without too much <laughs> distraction. Hold Please. on one second, actually. I like I the idea of like the CRDT. I <laughs> I added a note to the Python loop. Cool. Because I wanted to keep track of that. So I put a little thing in there. <laughs> uh, which one? File name handling? No. I, the oh, one. I am offline. Speaking of CRDTs or OT or whatever. <laughs> it's like nobody's written on the hack and D. Oh. Uh, oh. Sorry. Um, yeah, so I guess what i'd like to see is a list of and this this could all be combined or separate things is kind of a list of features to uh kind of expected features for a massive wiki builder which of course would work with obsidian most of the time uh And then also yeah. like, and then the same sort of thing of like, what are the future things that we want to do yep. and in a priority kind of order, but we don't have to agree on it, but even, even just a list somewhere and we can each put in our own priorities, what our desires are. Yep. Just so I could have visibility into that and divorce and separate that from kind of technical changes, like switching out the, the markdown yep. reader and stuff like that. Um, yep. I'd find that helpful um and also to see how compliant i am which is probably too harsh of a word but um how in sync are we right now like i don't i can't remember sidebar if i got that completely working and i was looking on my site and all of a sudden there is no search page at all i don't know what happened <laughs> um <laughs> Yeah, I had a search there. thing that was working and then it didn't yeah, work. And I, I, didn't, I didn't track it well, down. Now, like, yeah, now on my version, the whole page is gone. I don't know if I deleted it or what. Oh, I think I redownloaded. So there's a there was a thing with 11D where to get a page to show up, you pretty much need to have a file. Um, oh, that was right. Copy this, had this like search.md file. Yeah. And was, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I think I took a fresh version of massive wiki and i did not add those files back because maybe what happened on my site um but i'm trying to i don't want that to be a requirement so i got to work around 11d in that way and actually just so you know i'm i'm pulling as much of my code out of 11d like right now i have something that builds um the search files and um i was I plug that into 11D where as it was processing a page, I would have a trigger that would fire. 
but now I'm taking that completely out and I'm building my own JavaScript node process to search a folder for files and process process them. That way, reducing the dependency on on eleven D. And also, it might be interesting. I mean, so that could be a script that the Python version of Massive Wiki Builder could run if you wanted to, if, mm -hmm. if, you know, by shelling in the node or whatever. Yep. If we wanted to be consistent in that space or whatever. Um, as I build new things, and they might also be pluggable into yours, um, mm -hmm. like that. If I if I don't if I can remove the eleven D dependencies, so and, yeah, that but part really of that fun. also was to to make the file copying work. So now I'm thinking, oh, Roy, what I want to do is I want to have these files from the template and the files from Obsidian, and I'm going to put them into a folder and then point eleven D at that folder. And yeah. then I thought, if I'm doing that. Why can't I take two Obsidian vaults and point them as subfolders in a main one? And then you can have combined websites or subfolder in Obsidian into a subfolder of something else. Or, and then also I'm making this, this reader, I abstracted out the file system. So in theory, I could do what we were talking about before and point it to a GitHub account yep. so in theory i could i want to see if i can point it to a subfolder in a github account so yep. then i could take i could i could post part of bill's vault and part of massive wiki vault into a third vault yep um so that that should be that's all unlocked by that just a generic file walker that that's not that's abstracted out from an operating system i mean it's all written in node but which oh but actually the 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 it'll actually work in a browser or in in node so it's it's generic in that case too so in theory that same code could be used for what we were discussing like in a client side browser that would just hit github pull the files yep. down process them yep so kind of building that generic um builder will be in interesting to see how far I can get on that without hitting any walls. Do yeah, you, so do you do WikiLinks? Want... You can uh, go to WikiLinks now. Yeah, in in the in yeah. In my 11 D1 it does. I had to write my own stupid WikiLink parser, which is gonna be yep. which mm -hmm. is also so it has a bug that if you're in a code block it'll convert those as well. Yeah. which I think you were using as a way to the exit. So the example page on wiki, uh, <laughs> a massive wiki doesn't work because you can't see the brackets. Yeah. Um, I don't know a better. So integrating it into the markdown parser was just more time than I wanted to take. So right now it's just the regex. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we'll figure that out. But uh, that's exactly yeah. what Pete wrote with the, he just wrote this little renderer of, well, together we sort of did this, but he did most of the work on the renderer for the wiki links as a, you know, it's just a, in the mistletoe. Oh, here, just to find your own little, here's how you extend it. And we have, oh, okay, if you got double square brackets or image double square brackets, you know, use this code to produce. Uh, so, you know. And then mistletoe has the whole recursive descent parser that keeps you out of trouble when you get fence code box or whatever. Um, so I wanted to say, you, if you look at, if you want to look at the, well, it's just, it's just maybe this is just my own. The the best code to look at to see how we process things now is MWB three because we really changed the. It's simply we cut out. I don't know forty more lines of code, but it's just more. Um, if you just look at the main program there, it just says, here's what we do. And this step, this step, this step, you know, and I know and it's just a little cleaner to read. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I'm trying to not read the Python. But I wrote a little flowchart. No, I'll point you. I wrote a little, I had a little diagram about what the main parts are. I'll just dig that out. Do, uh, yeah, so that's a good question. So for your Wikilinks, um, is that your code or is that a library? 
that what you were saying y'all read the, something um there's uh we have a, a little plugin for the markdown pars parser okay. um which which detects the wiki links and does the right thing with you know the the data fields and the and is that a links. is that a plugin that y'all found or is it one y'all wrote um he took one that they they had an example of how you handled WikiLinks in GitHub, and Pete said that's pretty close to what Obsidian does. Yeah, they so, they had a, a kind of a degenerate case, um, and I I made it general enough that we could use it. Um, but it's pretty small, and you know a lot of it is just a regex. Um, so that enables the Markdown parser to generate the right HTML. There's another thing that. I guess it's integrated with that, and I'd have to think about. Bill could probably describe it better than me. Another thing that we do is, let me back up a sec. So Obsidian does this cool thing where you can put, um, you can either use absolute path um, wiki links or relative path wiki links or no path wiki links. So if you link to a file called, you know, my favorite file or, you know, uh, a page about dogs. Um, uh, Obsidian just automatically makes that work. Um, it, it looks in, probably it looks in the current directory and then it does a search for all, of, you know, all the directories to find any page called a page about dogs. Um, they don't, do, I, as far as I can tell, they don't do anything really special if you have two pages with the same name, although they do, as you're creating a link, they will do autocomplete. So if you're smart, you'll always create pages with their help and you'll never collide. But no, that's a good question. When they do the autocomplete, do they leave it as a raw wiki link or do they put the path in there? They leave it out. They, they leave the path out unless they need it. <laughs> Okay, so if they're so if, if you they, look at the look file, at their it, algorithm will auto detect it. Then they don't bother putting it in there. But if right. you had two, it would put it in there. Well, and then the even if it's in its subdirectory or a different directory, they'll just put whatever the file, whatever you put in as the name, right? I mean, if you look at that thing in Emacs, there's no path. It's just double square brackets. This like whatever you wrote in there and end and just... as as you do the autocomplete, um, they'll present you know, multiple, multiple of them, and then you can select it and then they will write the path. And I think they generally use write it absolute path. I don't think they, they optimize it to be relative. So anyway, that means that um, as our little plugin for Wikilinks runs, um, we tell the markdown parser, oh, here's the HTML you want for that Wikilink which is all it cares about. But then we also um, save off, hey, we just hit a wiki link, I think. And I guess actually we, before that, <laughs> before that uh, we've run through the whole uh, directory, collected the file names. So we've collected all the destination file names. Um, and then we have a pass where um, every time we hit a wiki link, we look in our list of, um, our big list of all the files in this wiki and we resolve it um, to the right. I, I think we write absolute paths every time, absolute HTML hrefs every time. Mm -hmm. And we don't do anything special to resolve them. If there's multiple matches, we just pick whichever one came first in the, in the dictionary. Yeah, I must have done something weird on my latest deployment because now I'm not <laughs> oh, I guess if I pulled it so one thing that I was doing is uh, I was testing out that because Bill had kind of brought up all the problems with the wiki links and I'd actually had my parser. So I am collecting a list of all the files up front. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and that's the piece that I'm going to actually externalize from 11D um, and I'll just pass it in. And then I... Uh, what I was doing naively is that if I found two destinations, I was just outputting them both. <laughs> so there were two, for a while there, there were two images on the conceptual diagram because that's the one I used. I've just threw one in another yeah. folder. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, you know, I, I, I kind of have, I've always, for since social text days, I've, I've kind of wanted to have 
the ability to have multiple destinations from a link. Mm -hmm. So it would be cool. I think it would be all, almost unusable for most people, but it would be cool if you started to click on a link and it said, oh, you can go to these three different pages. You know, which one do you want? I can't it's imagine that, that being practical, but. It's amazing the number of interfaces I've noticed recently that actually have it to where you can never just click on a link. So like, I think in Miro, <laughs> it always pops up the yeah. link and makes you click twice. So if, if that, if that's getting more common, it's not going to be, it's not going to be ever greatly common, but then you could pop up the two choices. Yeah. Although I don't know how you'd visually distinguish them. I guess you'd put the you'd path and they it. could kind of see what the. Uh, I'd, I'd probably do a snippet or a thumbnail or something like that. Yeah, it's true. Two thumbnails. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, so yeah, I, I kind of worked through all that, but that's the, that's the piece I want to kind of rewrite and externalize. And then I was thinking, oh, so at some point we might want to do partial builds. Um, well, two things. That data, that kind of metadata about all the files that are in there, and that gets us to kind of the backlinks thing, is that yep. it might be nice to store that data actually in on the on the massive wiki site as a file in a standard location so that people like, could pull down, a, you know, I presume JSON yep. of the data of the website. Yeah, um, that's that's brilliant. And then yep, if we choose, we could choose to store that with the, either with the source data or store a cached copy. And that would allow us to do kind of incremental builds where someone only changes one page, which isn't that necessary. There was some, oh, for the, for the one that's displaying it in the browser. I don't want to have to download all yeah. the pages every time I display it. Yeah. So we'd need to have a cat. Well, not need to. It'd be efficient to have a cache somewhere. Yeah. Okay, you guys um, lost me. I don't know what you're talking about because I don't have, I can't visualize exactly what. Well, just, yeah, real quickly, uh, in order for me to figure out the wiki links, I have to go through every file in the whole site. So just like sense? we do. Yeah, because uh, if you're just looking at Obsidian Vault, if you're just looking at the markdown files, that information isn't there. Right, but if I save that, and if I save a list of all the files somewhere, then I don't have to rerun through all the files every time I want to figure out something. It's just caching off that in that that work, I, saving you know, a I, copy of the work. Okay, I, all right. I'm this is not. I, so yeah. we have an all files dict or something like that, right? Um, it would be cool if we wrote that out to JSON as a file. Um, Bentley uses that to um, to know if there are new files or not. Is one of the, one of the things that he wants to be able to use that for. But just in general, it would be nice to say, "Hey, here's all the files in this wiki in in data format." So the other thing that would be nice is here's all the links in this wiki. Um, uh, and then another use case for that, which I think is really cool, is. Uh, if you're doing distributed wikis, kind of like the, the the vision of Massive Wiki is that you've got multiple copies of the same same thing, you could actually optimize the the file transfer for that. Right. Yeah. No um, comparison. Even to the extent of maybe you're doing it in Activity Pub, right? So you get a thing that that says, "Here's the you know I'm not going. I don't need or or Noster." You know, I don't need to send the whole wiki. All I'm going to do is send you, hey, we, we made a new file or we changed the file and here's that file. Yeah. Yeah, so that will be okay, interesting. I, I just understand that in a very dimmest way. So I you need a picture to show exactly what's happening. But, I mean, I just don't know what, the, I understand what you said, but I'm like, okay. It might be, uh, I think we might wait on that until if Pete and I ever get No, around. I mean, you guys, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm, old, I'm older than you boys, so I, I'm not, <laughs> not going to be around long enough to really make use of it. But I just, I yeah. just, right now, the way I understand it, the reason we do this thing, you know, you build the wiki, then it's out there on the web. If you want to make changes to the wiki, you got to go to the source. And you got a number of ways of doing that. Mm -hmm. And that's where the changes happen. You know, and then you refresh the build when, you know, the way we have this automated with Netlify. Oh, you made changes, fine, we'll rebuild it for you. And the bills generally don't take very long. I guess they could, 
if you had i don't know but well, so, what, so but but that you know the, but just if you're running you in the browser is is a case where you and and having to pull down all the files because they're not local that's a case where the build starts to take long if you do so, all the files yeah bill i don't know if you're i, I, I really understood what so we're, now we're, we're talking about <laughs> no i don't know because so, Peter well, here, says something well, completely different than what my understanding right. is so I'm so like, instead of having a builder what we're talking about is having a website you can go to and you could point it to any github account in order to display it as a web page yeah, okay. So, I mean, GitHub does that in a way, right? Because you can do that with your own repos. You well, that's, your but that's that's with a build step. I'm saying without a build step. It would so, just dynamically read the GitHub and display it as a web page. So you dynamically do the build? Well, with, even a partial build, yeah. You just want to build that well, one. Well, yeah, page. you, you, you build dynamically build a, a just in time. You, you just in time, whatever the, the user is reading is the thing that you need to build. And the rest of it you don't need to build. You do need to know what all the rest of it is to get the links to work, I think. I guess you don't actually. It's well, to know I whether or not it's. About, I got to think about this. I mean, I just don't. But you know, so another way to think of it, I don't think this is going to help build, but wh where we're kind of going is enabling multiple builders to be able to communicate about the state of their builds by passing, you know, the, the, the data structures that we have privately right now, we could actually publish them and then, yeah, sure, right, whatever, you know, um, so one builder could say, hey, I've you know, there's a new page. Maybe I've redone the whole thing, but here's a new page. And you know, the other another builder can say, or another builder might say, I'm comparing my list of files with your list of files, and I care about these three. I don't care about the rest of them. Something like that. It's so like a meta builder. I wonder. I see you... that. I just want to know how do you update? So you got to update the lunar index too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so that's a different, totally different thing. Because you're going to go read the page. Somehow, I don't I haven't looked at Lunar. Or how do you do like incremental updates to an index that's sitting there? That's like, <laughs> no, we build an index. Yeah, they actually the don't allow here. incremental updates. But if you stored the source data, then you could rebuild an index off of it. Or if you were, you could make a change a and then rebuild it. No, I you understand. I'm just trying to. Well, so that I understand searches. because I understand how Lunar <laughs> works. This other piece, I just don't know. I guess I don't understand exactly. I have to think about the use case that you described. Yeah, it's pretty. Because if you're still doing collaborative work on the wiki, you're working on the source somewhere. So this is all about, oh, I updated source. What's it take to make that available to others? It's more just enabling someone to view a massive wiki without that's on GitHub without permission from anyone without having to deploy it without having to run a builder just hit it and that's good sure it uh, it makes it it makes the onboarding a little easier and for one use case for the reader it does yeah, not having to download the files. I mean, reading in GitHub is kind of a pain. I give you the URL to my wiki. I mean, here's the Netlify that's, that's thing. Only so that's only if the you same. posted. That's only if you created one. But if you didn't create one, or if I want to see it in a different way. And I didn't create one because what? I didn't want it public. Or you haven't got around to it. No, if you don't want it public, or, you want to put it on GitHub. Or you don't know how to run Massive Wiki Builder on your repo. What'd you say, Bentley? Or, or if, if you I don't want it public, public, I don't put it, put it on GitHub. On GitHub. No, because I'm, put sharing, it as a I'm public sharing content. Account. I'm sharing content generation with you know four people. Well, then you would share it privately, hopefully. If it's on GitHub, you've posted it. If, I mean, if it's a public repo on GitHub, it's public. Okay. So if you've done that, but maybe you don't know how to run Massive Wiki Builder, then I could still view it as a website. Okay. Thank you. And I could also view it in my own... Like, let's say I had features that your massive wiki builder didn't have, then I could view it with my viewer. Yeah, no, I get it. Thank you. Feature. I just, uh, I know it took, it took 20 minutes, but you know, <laughs> thanks. 
but that's really far down the road. I don't think Peter and I can do anything about that. Well, no, I think your point about making using massive wikis and making them available easier. I mean, this is this is the activation energy for trying to get this thing going. I mean, federated wiki suffers from the same thing. All we got to do is this, and then you have this thing. It's like, yeah, nice. Now what? My Sunday morning's just been taken up because, like, what am I doing? <laughs> you know. So I think what you just said makes it uh, very much easier, and that might be really important for having massive wiki and that that style of shared version. You know, collections of documents, files out and about so i actually think that's actually i yeah. might make that a higher priority given in terms of how hard it seems to be to get people to you know get on board you know, it doesn't solve the problem about how do you do sharing and versioning because yeah. there's right. only there's only one hard way to do that and we'll help you know you know you can jump in the pool in the deep end with the rest of us <laughs> but um it it unlocks a huge number of of repositories because any you know any software project that's got a docs folder that's a bunch of markdown files all of a sudden hey you've got a wiki maybe you're not using wiki links anyway but uh the the other part of that uh the the, the wish that i had for that the the dynamic renderer was also something where you could click the edit button like in the old style wikis and it would, and it would do the right thing right Either yeah. with your GitHub login, or or you could set up kind of an anonymous thing where you know you've uh, the the renderer that you're using has credentials for, you know, weak credentials to at least be able to post to main or yeah. or whatever. Yeah, probably need a backend for that these days. Yeah, but a but, small one. And, yeah, right, a little bit. And anyway. a, yeah, uh, and a and a uh, serverless one. Okay, yeah. so in the massive wiki world. I think this proposal ought to be fleshed out with at least, you know, a, a, you know, three to six bullet lists so that Bill Anderson could actually figure out what are the parts? What has to happen? There's actually this there's a thing in in developer where I was describing this and I, it, it's probably like two bullets instead of six bullets, but. Well, I don't even need to six, but I think we should, I, I would like to have this out in front and understandable because I think it's from what um, <laughs> the insight I just had, I actually understand why it would be really important for uptake. So here, I, I've got about six bullets. <laughs> okay. So it's called Zircon. Oh, all right, great. I'll look there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's in the, that Zircon is in the, yeah. In the, the, the to do list. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the roadmap. Okay. So I guess if we don't really have like a, a, a feature list yet, like you have a, you have a roadmap, a technical roadmap. The, um, the feature list, I, that's a, a, a righteous uh, ask that would, that, that would be a good thing for us to do. Uh, and, and it occurs to me that it's kind of a few, like, there's like core things uh, like, mm -hmm double square bracket links you know markdown files that kind of stuff yeah then there's like extra things like like maybe um um uh level maybe that's level zero or, or whatever then there's the level one things like you have a way to see all the pages you have you know a list of all the pages you have a way to search you know yeah level two is maybe sidebars and and different page templates or something like that yeah, that's what I'd like to see. Yeah, so um, some of that actually is in the roadmap, some of these features. I think yeah. mostly we've been focused on technical things and, and these other bigger pictures, like let's have let's have our own, like, you know, what is it, the electron based, you know, app that's the front end of massive wikis. Yeah. That was Pete's thing called Opal, where you just, yeah. you know, we'll bury all the, the get we'll bury all that and you can just Opal is kind of Obsidian Lite, um, customized for Massive Wiki. Yeah. So where do we want to collaborate on that Massive Wiki feature? Uh, develop, developer Wiki on a page there. I think that's a, you should add Bentley to the Wiki. Yeah, is that okay if we add you to the Wiki? Yep. Um, because that's the place where we keep most of that information and, you know, 
can try and run the latest code there too. So now, if you want to give me access to the team, I could start putting. I don't know if you want massive yeah, wiki builder could... eleven D loaded on. The, yeah, that would be awesome. Under that Thank group. You. Oh, yep. in the repository. Yeah, it'd be great. Yeah, uh, in put my repository before. in the yeah team. Okay, in the developer massive wiki repository. Uh, in the massive wiki organization. The, the organization. Right, like, yes, right. Yeah, right. Yeah. Correct. Sorry. That's the word I was think, trying to think about. I can't. Uh, I just there can't are a bunch of and then straight. I guess maybe I should break out this non 11 stuff to make it easier, Pete, if you ever want to run. Yeah, I, I like that idea. From yeah. massive wiki. Yeah, that would be Builder. useful. Because yeah, if I'm gonna make I, I'm gonna make something that will index all the pages, it'll build the Luna files, um, and then like index all the links, find all the links, index them, generate, you know, it'll generate a few indexes, so a page index, a link index, and a Luna index, a search index. Well, that's sort of what we do. Right? In Luna, that's... you already have two, but if we if we did wanted to share a code. Then that would run both in a, uh, it could be called from, I, and you don't have to use it, but it could be called from Python. It could be called from 11D and it could be called in the browser. Well, so I mean, in Python right now, we just run a sub process to build a lunar index. We just happen to use, since we're reading the files in Python, we just like yeah. create the data structures and then we just run this thing. So yeah, it, I just, I just can't run Python. No, no, I was just saying, but so, but we're basically running Node underneath, so it would be really... Yeah, yeah, really... it's not that hard to shell out. Oh, yeah, actually, yeah, you're calling Luna from in Node anyways, yeah. Yeah, so I want to make these available. So rather than having them inside my Luna repo, I'll create another repo. Although I still have a problem with handling packages is much more painful than it should be when it's your own package. Um, Python or, or Node? uh node because i'm not using pypy so i don't i don't know if the same challenges exist but he um, wanted to make a massive wiki builder a pypy thing and i'm like i spent an afternoon reading about that and then you know we stopped <laughs> <laughs> so yeah i mean there's this like yeah, I don't want to have to do the round trip to like NPM or my own package manager to be able to run the code. But then if you're running it locally, your versions get messed up. There's there's not an elegant way to to do that yet, right. which is a shame because yeah. I always want to I want to reuse code in like three or four different projects, and I don't want to build it as a. I mean, you know, that's why everyone's going to mono repos these days, but. And I guess if you have a mono repo and you use sub modules, then it's the same as, but the, even the sub modules, the versioning on that's not great. Yeah. You can't say, give me a specific version in the sub module. You have to figure out the head and point it to the right. Um, get. I think you, you can, you can, I think you can, you be can in certainly the sub get branches. You can assign do, branches. Yeah. You can do sure. get checkout, whatever you want. Mm hmm yeah, but that's not hooked to the pa NPM package file version uh, number. Yeah. Right? Yeah, no, right, right, yeah, sure. Yeah. Maybe I should write my own thing that looks at that package and then updates the get file with the correct. I, uh, I, can do that. I, I just got the, there's a, a, a little Python uh, chat GPT UI, a terminal UI for chat GPT. And that was one of my asks in the issues. I wish there were a version thing. And he's like, and, and I wish it were automatic. <laughs> so he did, he ended up writing code that looks at the, the Git version and maps that to a, a number version or something like that. I, I felt a little bit bad. Hey, okay, it's 12, 15, I'm gonna jump off here. Um, thanks, Bill. Yeah, thanks, Bentley. Thanks, Bentley. Yeah. Yep. I'll talk. Do you want to wanna, do you want to talk more or let's hang I'll on sit. for yeah, let's chat for a minute or two and then okay. we won't go okay. too long without you, Bill. That's all right. I'll see you guys uh, around the internet when you want. Thanks, to. Bill. <laughs> Can kill the recording or not? Either way. I'll kill I'll it. I'll go with the recording in case Bill watches later.
Okay, I'll leave it. Uh, yeah. There was something else, and now I've lost my train of thought. Oh, yeah. So, uh, so yeah. So I have some features badly written because I'm using terminology you're probably not using in my wiki options for deployment. Um, get a uh, Google Doc sheet. So yeah, I can put that on massive developer.massive.wiki. We could also use a Google Sheet. I mean, maybe if you want to go into the wiki option sheet and either make notes on terminology you want to change or just change it and see if that actually, you know, I was just jotting things down as I thought yeah. of them, but I don't know. Let's how. try that. Yeah. I'd like your kind of to look over it and make sure it yeah. makes sense and stuff. Yeah, that sounds and, great. And we almost need to figure out like, like right now I have check marks and then, you know, a little approximate meaning it kind of works. <laughs> um, Do you, what would you, uh, how would you feel about changing that into an Airtable base? Oh, I love Airtable. I just so haven't I might... quite figured out what I want those drop down values yeah. to be for the status. Yeah. I'm trying to, and I've had this problem with lots of things is like in a, in a, in a, system that's constantly evolving and changing what is done for one of these features yeah it's almost like each individual feature needs a different version number or something and these need yeah. to probably link i guess we we could have a description column with you know a little bit more of a documentation oh and i put on there i don't know if i think it might be interesting to share the regexes that we're using any place we're using that um yeah, that's a good so idea we can consolidate on that yeah um, that's actually a really good idea because yeah okay well i can throw it in the air table and then send you a cool that sounds link. great although i guess air table with editing it's the free version i'll have to figure out whether i'm going to use my work account or not um it can be a free one Actually, they have a limited made... of five people, I think, unless it's a form. Forms can be unlimited, yeah. but yeah, five, but five actual... people is plenty. Yeah, it's just that I can't have five other people. <laughs> um, it's per workspace, per Airtable workspace. Yeah, so I think you'd so have you... to create a new login to get a different workspace. No, you can make as many workspaces as you want. Can you? I literally have like 40 or something, god awful thing. I mean, I have 40, but that's because everyone, I have so many paid accounts on there. Let's see, all workspace, add workspace, am I under my account or my work account? I'm under my personal account. It, Create uh, a workspace. Each, each workspace has its own billing. Interesting. Okay. And most of my works, like almost all of my workspaces are free. Right, yeah, if you can do that, that's fine. I thought it was key to account. So yeah, I could make a massive wiki workspace and invite cool. you as a collaborator and we can play around in that. And then we can figure out how to get it to massivewiki.dev to post it. And actually I already, for my 11D stuff, I already have some node scripts that hit an error table and convert yeah. it to JSON and save it locally. Yeah. Um, and then process it as files. Although now what I'm thinking I wanna do well, if it's a list, that would be, I think I almost want to process it into Markdown rather than into JSON yeah. and then have our standard. And then you could store it in, you know, and then it would work in Obsidian too, right? Yep. Um, so it's more like a generating process rather than generating it to JSON. Although yep. I almost want to do both so that we have a data API if yep. anyone wants to hit it, right? Yep, I agree. Uh, so I'll play I, the other way to do it is to generate a JSON and then have a separate JSON to, to Markdown converter. Yeah, that's probably, it's probably good to break it apart and then people can do it or just have two of them and have them run side by side. Yeah. <laughs> or, I, or guess the same it, I guess in the code, alphabet. it'll be the same because at some point I'll take the, the JSON data from Airtable anyway, so it doesn't matter. Yep. Uh, same difference. Um, thanks for thanks for joining in. I, it's super appreciated. Well, I 
yeah i came to the point where i'm gonna have to redo my personal website and it's like well now's the time to look at it yep and it'd be nice to um self-hosted ghost is is pretty nice yeah i'll have to check that out so ghost is a con is a open source content management system is that what you would call it um yeah it it um it works for it, it's if you know substack it's kind of like an open source substack i don't know if that's a good comparison or not but anyway it it um it does it's a simple cms um they have different themes uh blogs and portfolios and you know whatever um uh, the other claim to fame it has is it's a newsletter and it can support paid newsletters pretty well actually so um i'm i'm looking more and more these days it seems like the way to get to people is like it's it's hard to push things through twitter it's hard to push things through medium actually it's hard to push things mm -hmm. through mastodon you know it's just hard so so i'm kind of like trying to center down to i'll have a blog um it'll have rss <laughs> It'll have an uh, email newsletter to make sure that you can get it if you, you know, no matter no matter what kind of. And then I wish it, I wish there was like, I wish Ghost had Activity Pub. I was just wanting that today, I think. Um, I don't think it does. Uh, I no, don't, some, someone has built Activity Pub into 11D. Um, another, well, I was going to say another thing to look at is micro.blog but it's not open source. It's just a service run by a cool dev and, and a small team. But the way micro.blog works is pretty slick. I wish there were an open source version of it. I mean, it's kind of, is it just kind of like Blogger back in the day? Micro.blog? Yeah. Um, it's different because uh, it can, you can do microblogging with it, um, or you can do regular blogs, and you can do newsletters. And the microblog sends itself out to ActivityPub. The newsletters are built out of blog posts. It's actually really slick, and it's and it's cool. Uh, the other thing about Ghost is it's got um, one of the gorgeous uh, editors, um, kind of like Medium or Substack, where that may or may not be something that you care about, but um, it's super easy to write stuff in Ghost, um, and you know it looks beautiful. Um, so that's the good the good part. The bad part is like, oh, I've got you know a couple hundred pages of massive wiki stuff that I want, so I'm going to have a thing that pushes, you know, builds it into HTML and then pushes it into Ghost API. I think. Yeah. So Ghost doesn't take Markdown, right? It's HTML um yeah it's html and one of the block editors that's really good so you never look at html but right. it's it's html under the hood but yeah. if we're sending it to them we definitely have to do the transformations and then if we were if we wanted to make it a two-way and we we're pulling we'd either have to pull it and keep it html if we wanted to store that data in um i think they're I, I would imagine their HTML is deterministic enough that you could turn it back into Markdown and it would be okay. But I guess you could try and if you hit a bad failure, just leave it in HTML. Yeah. Um, or both. You actually store the source HTML if you need to. Yeah. Yeah, it'd be interesting. Okay. Yeah, so um yeah, so we can collaborate on the feature list. That'll give me a good feeling for where I'm at and where I want to go and what features. I was yeah. trying to decide kind of what to do next, although I, I'm fascinated with this. I finally made something that reads a directory and it's abstracted out. So I theoretically should it's be able to fun, yeah. write some code, some code and point it at the GitHub API and the local Git in theory. I think um, I have bad news for Ghost. It looks like it's read only, not write. Oh, well, that may answer our question. <laughs> it gives me a heartburn for what I'm trying to do. But... Right, right. Yeah, because you can't get your um, 
I can't wiki really content in that. there. That's I'll have to keep looking. Maybe uh now there's a there I noticed they had an API and then a developer API. I'm looking at the developer API. Maybe that's okay. the or maybe I'm maybe I'm not looking at the developer API. Maybe that's a problem though. Maybe I'm looking at a content API instead of an anyway. Not your problem yet. Yeah, okay, cool. Well then I'll yeah, I'll uh convert these over to Airtable, send you a login, uh or, or an invite, and then yeah, yeah, just just reword them. Maybe I'll give you, you know, we'll put a second description column and a second name, and then you yeah. and I can sync up on that in case we have any differences. Yeah, that sounds um, great. Cool. Yeah, it's fun. I, I, I do. I am gonna blame you because I, I was coding, <laughs> like for four hours last night. So <laughs> I had um, a life. Um, and then I got interested in doing massive wiki and now I have no life. <laughs> it's your fault. But you have massive wikis. That's true. That's true. You'll friends. get a life again. Yeah. <laughs> sure. All right, man. This is no Thanks a lot. I'll let you go. Take care. Bye. Bye.